Hey guys, welcome back to the Bucket of Think Tank for another round of Rapid Fire Comic Book Review. And we've only got two books today. Um, one book just wasn't feeling, wasn't feeling. So our first one is Dark Knights of Steel, issue 6 by Tom Taylor. This is possibly still Tom Taylor's best book that he's written so far. Well, since his new wave of books. And this one here, um, mm hmm. Yeah, it's, um, let's just go out, let's just go in, let's go in. So this one opens up with Constantine, and he's. By default, he's mourning, you know, lost the king, lost the prince, all because of his visions of the future. Prophecy is a terrible thing, people. Never, and I repeat, never follow prophecy. Acknowledge it like, huh, okay. Keep it in mind. But just go about your day. Go about your day. Because, ha honestly, this all happened because Constantine had a prophecy that he told everybody about. So, Constantine uh, reveals to us that this, um, this little servant boy here, um, the attendant to Constantine is actually Tim Drake, and is a spy for Batman. And, of course, he's sort of given the bums rush. He's almost killed before Constantine speaks for him, and, you know, uh, Tim makes it back, and he sort of explains what's been going on in the Kingdom of Storms, that, you know, they're kind of, the people in the Kingdom of Storms, the royal family, they're kind of, you know, mourning the loss of their, you know, king and heir, like, you know, and they're like, yeah, that doesn't really matter because, again, this has all happened because King Jefferson um, had the king, um, had the had their king assassinated, had Jorel assassinated. So this is all really because of the Kingdom of Storms. And, of course, then the question is, kal brings up, like, you know, they're spreading lies about what my sister did. And Howard is like, are they lies? Like, you know, we haven't really gotten confirmation that what they said happened did or didn't happen. She denies, like, I didn't. I would never. And, you know, to be fair, the first face isn't convincing. The second one kind of is, but who knows anymore. And Diana points out that, you know, uh, the bigger problem is that war is coming, and if it does happen, um, the Amazons will side with the Kingdom of Storms. Like, her mother is just as stubborn as she is, and Philippa, Philippus, 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 Philippus says, like, you know, the best way to avoid that would be if there was a regime change on on Themyscira, on Paradise Island. That would be the best way to stop the Amazons from joining the war. Otherwise, war is happening. Uh, meanwhile, Constantine is still in the mood and decides to find a way to bring back the king and his son, so he calls Etrigan, or rather, the person who is the host for Etrigan, Rachel Ghul, which is a really, actually, a clever idea. I'm surprised it hasn't happened before. Maybe it has happened before, I don't know. And he's like, alright, so you want me to bring him back. So I got bad news for you. I can't bring... King Jefferson back, alright? Like, I could, but you see, he's missing what's called a heart. Oh, not metaphorically. There's no heart there. So even if I were to, even if I could bring him back without something to pump blood, you know, keep him alive, he'll have died, would have wasted everyone's time. The boy, though, we're fine. They just dropped him. <laughs> These are crush injuries. I can fix that, no problem. But I'm gonna need something from you. I'm gonna need the children. I'm like, he thought, uh, the children, or does it mean, the Titans. I know you've been hiding them. I want them. So, take the deal. Get, tell me where you hide them, and um, I'll bring back the boy. Well, that's interesting. So the Teen Titans are in this world? Or a variation of the Teen Titans? Well, that's, that's interesting. Meanwhile, kal decides to try to make things better by descending on Themyscira, or Paradise Island. I forget which one they call it. In this book, anyway. And since it's an island where men are not allowed, by default, the Amazons are freaking out. And, you know, uh, everything calms down just long enough to go like, the, the law is no man may say foot on Paradise Island. I haven't set foot. Um, Hippolytus is not feeling that and just like, fine, be cute. And stabs him. Fuck around and find out. It's pretty much what that is. Mm, 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 mm. He wakes up, and he's bound by the lasso of truth, and is interrogated by Lois Lane. And Lois points out, look, I am the ambassador, the master of whispers for the queen, and, you know, I don't... This war feels like it came out of nowhere. It feels like something else is going on. Something's moving the strings here that were being played. Something else is going on. And Cal, kind of like, look, I'm bound by the lasso of truth. And there are questions you could ask me if you knew what the readers knew, but you can't. So I'm going to tell you right now, I could kill you right now. I'm not here, and I'm telling you that so you know that I'm not here to do that. What I want is to try to stop this war from happening, and um, I really need your help to do that. And Lois like, well, 
I got bad news for you. Um, the Amazons have already left. War is a coming. And that's how the comic ends. So honestly, this was all right. Um, it isn't bad. Per it, it isn't bad. It isn't bad. It isn't bad. It feels like we're sort of getting the story in the direction it needs to go. I like that we. This I think this might be one of the few episodes where Batman's not there at all, which is great. I don't know why. I hate when characters are on the cover who are not in the book. I just, I just don't. Especially when there's no. I don't know. I don't know. I get the issue, like you know, showing the duality, you know, the duality between um, Kal El and Bruce, like you know, they're they half brothers and whatnot, and they've been pretty heavy. Pretty heavy stuff so we have Supergirl coming in killing the uh, killing uh, Jacob um, you know, the Prince of Storms we have her killing the metal men we have her topping it off by killing King Jefferson himself and of course remember what happened just a few episodes ago when well, a few years ago when Kal-El killed well Presumably killed Bruce because he found out, hey, Bruce is half returning. Bruce is possibly the heir to the throne. So what's going on here? What what is going on here? So Kara, by default, said she didn't do it. We have no reason to believe her. But we also have no reason to really doubt her in this world. So could it be the Green Man? You know, evil Lex Luthor, evil Er Lex Luthor of the Green Lantern Ring. Could it be Martian Manhunter who's been going around impersonating them? And going around killing these, uh, killing these guys, and pinning it on these guys, killing. Uh, you know that that's a cool idea. Could it be Starro? Oh, that'd be cool. It'd be Starro, Starro. Um, we don't know. We don't know. Um, I think it's a bit on the nose to make it be um, that you know Kara and Kal El are secretly playing this. We're actually a really terrible group. Um, you know, going full Targaryen on us. One would say. Hard to say, hard to say. And finally, we have a really, really good book because, you know, Sean the Goat Murphy is back at it again. And this issue was another fun one. It really was, it really was. So first we have um, the events of a month ago in Neo-Gotham City. And it's Terry McGinnis fighting, well, pretty much about to kill this guy who killed his dad. Or at least had a hand in the death of his dad. And he's met, uh, he's apprehended by Dick Grayson of the GTO, and G uh, Dick Grayson introduces him to Derek Powers. Like, look, there was something else going on that you didn't know about, but your dad knew. I, and I want you to help me bring justice to your dad. So you help me out, and Dick Grayson wipes your record clean. And um, we're good. See that? We find, we get justice for your dad. It was my BFF. And, you know, we're all good. You get a cool bat suit, too. So there you go. Then we cut back to where we last left off with Bruce meeting Jack Napier. And it's revealed that during the events of Batman White Knight, during the whole final big battle between Joker and, well, Jack, I'm sorry, Jack Napier and Batman, Jack placed a microchip in him that basically creates a sort of like little AI, this fun AI of Joker or Jack Napier. Actually, it's interesting because he looks a bit more like, he looks like Jack, but he has a certain Joker-esque feel to him, which I think is... Slightly appropriate, slightly not. It all depends. And he's revealed that, you know, he's here to help, primarily help Harley. And as a microchip, as essentially an AI, he's got, he can um, connect to every uh, every security camera in the area. He knows that three cameras have already found him. And he could be a great help to Bruce. So they go from there. And also that Gotham City has is entirely different from what it was in the 10 years that Bruce has been in jail. Like, Effectively, ever since Bruce, you know, relinquished the Wayne fortune, that's multiple billions of dollars, a bunch of acres of land. Gotham City has totally changed. Also, still has the blimp. Gotham City is like the only city I know that keeps the blimp business going. It's good to be in the dirigible, dirig, dirigible industry. It's not a word I get to use often. And this is like, okay, f look, I says I can't get rid of you. You can just sort of tag along and talk less. I don't know. But luck. But then um, Bruce is apprehended by well Dick Grayson the GTO. Dick Grayson goes full like you know we got to arrest you man you broke out. Um, all must be for order. And with the help of Jack, 
Um, Bruce is able to fend off Dick Grayson with his new fancy spanchy um, police suit. I guess fuck the police. Um, I am swearing a lot this issue. I like it. And then Dick is met by Babs. And we sort of get an understanding exactly what's going on now. So the GTO is officially a separate division from the GCPD, which it really wasn't before. So that means some one or two things have gone on here. Babs is pointing out that Dick basically threw her under the bus so that he could uh, really just do what he felt he needed to be done as the GTO. And Dick points out that, yeah, the GTO apprehended every super criminal in Gotham City in less time than it took the GCPD to ever bring any of them in. So, like, okay, okay, okay. But Babs points out, look, the people are still afraid because you're spying on people. You've basically, you've got tanks patrolling the city. You know, you've gone full Gestapo, and you have you fixed the supervillain problem, but the homelessness, drug use, suicides, all that's still going on. I'm like, well, congratulations. Congratulations, you've saved the city. It looks so depressing, but you saved the city. And Dick fires back, like, you know what? What matters is that, that had something like this existed before, me, you, Bruce, none of us would have become vigilantes. We wouldn't have lost our parents to supervillains. Dick, you lost your parents to the mafia. Those are not supervillains. Depending on who you ask. And of course, Bab decides like sort of bask in the fact that um, they still couldn't keep track of Bruce. Bruce basically left out with the help of Jason and he's like, look, now you finally get what you want. A challenge, something to justify the GTO. The GTO feels like one of those extreme measures that you let happen to deal with an extreme situation, but once you open that door, you can't close it back again. So the GTO has to stay. The GTO has to be this sort of, um, you know, we're spying on everyone for the greater good, and when it's done, we'll stop. But who defines when it's done? Um, we, I think we all remember the scene in uh, Batman The Dark Knight under Christopher Nolan when um, Lucius Fox developed a program that would allow... Bruce to monitor every cell phone and Lucius is like look you can't this is dangerous you can't keep it um, I, I might have to quit if you keep it and Bruce is like I get it and he doesn't tell Lucius but he does plan to destroy it afterwards which he did so good meanwhile Bruce is on his way to get a new bat suit something fancy schmancy something to look good in and uh, he goes to one of the mini bat caves apparently Bruce was not stupid Thank heavens. And he built uh, a couple of mini caves all around the city. Which, you know, all right. Every man has a hobby, especially when he has no parents. And, you know, all of his children basically turn their back on him. And we see the new bat suit, the new hotness. I'm not going to lie. I'm with Jack Joker, JJ. I'm going to call him JJ. So JJ here loves the suit, loves the, the black and yellow and the little, little was that, tints of orange on the side? I like it. I like it. And then it's all interrupted by the arrival of Harley. I'm sorry, Harleen. It's, it's weird. Um, Jack is stunned by seeing Harleen again. After all these years, she still looks absolutely stunning. Well, to be fair, she does. Years have been kind to her, which is good considering how stressful her life must be. And Bruce like, look, I didn't think you wanted to see me. You know, I just didn't think that, you know, after everything. She's like, look, look, I get it. But not only are you my best friend, Bats, you're my husband. And Jack's like, whoa, 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 stop. feel like I've missed something, and that's how the comic ends. So, honestly, I'm with Jack on this one, because as someone who's been reading all of these Sean Gordon Murphy, Batman, White Knight books, this hasn't happened. Uh, we don't get to see Bruce's response to this, so maybe this was done without Bruce's knowledge, or maybe it was. Um, did they fall for each other? Who knows? That would also explain why Harleen was so in a, like, stuck in her head like she seemed a bit off and a bit down in the last issue could it be that not only was that was she just missing the fact she didn't get to see bruce and you know there's a batman going around but she also by default hasn't seen her husband and that also lends credence to last issue when um jackie talked about that she found out a bunch of new stuff about harleen dad and dad we thought she was referring to joker and jack like two separate you know versions like you know but was she referring to Jack and Dad, or Joker and Bruce in this case? 
who knows overall though really fun issue um great to see what everyone's doing everyone's doing like ah, i didn't get to show it but duke has also been fed up with the gto and he's left probably because dick grace is being an ass which is like the worst thing you should ever pick up from bruce like you should pick up the martial arts skills the detective skills um the ability to think on your feet like you know the resolve but don't 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 pick up the ass. Don't pick up the hard ass line. It's it's bad. Anyway, with that, my brain is going to close here. If you're new to the Bucket Think Tank, feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. Check out some of my videos, and I'll catch you all later. This is the Bucket Think Tank signing off. And it's watching as always. May your fandom serve you well.